Hi, everyone. Thanks for registering for the uh, webinar. And uh, thanks for Nancy and Milo for joining us today for the webinar. Um, us New Zealanders, we are the best at times of joining things on time. So um, I might as well leave it to Nancy and Milo to introduce themselves. And uh, I reckon we can kick it off. Thank you, Simon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nancy from Engineers Networks. I'm the product manager. I've been working with Go Wireless uh, on uh, developing the channel for New Zealand. And uh, we, we have been organizing these webinars regularly to keep our channel partners uh, informed and updated on our latest cloud solutions. And um, we, we are also running uh, regular promotions on our cloud devices. So uh, people who log on to this webinar will be enjoying some exclusive offers that you may want to uh, check out with Simon and the team. And um, yeah, today is um, we, in Singapore, um, coming up from here from Singapore, Milo and me is actually working from home uh, because of the cases in Singapore is quite high. So um, although is, we, we are working from Singapore, but we are actively um, working closely with Go Wireless to address any doubts and concern on our cloud solution. So um, this webinar is a recorded webinar. So if you are interested to have a copy of this recorded um, webinar, you can get it from Simon. Okay, I think I will pass the host to um, Milo to carry on with this uh, training. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Hi guys, good afternoon. Yeah, this is Milo uh, from Ingenious Network Singapore. Uh, basically, I'm the product solution specialist who will uh, host today's training. So today's training is more on information on, about our Ingenious Cloud offerings. I'll be discussing about the solution in brief, and then I'll be discussing about the latest updates as well as give you guys a walkthrough on the user interface. And if we have time, I'll go over through the mobile application as well. If you guys have any questions, you can type it on chat, or you can also use the QA function on Zoom. So I'll be giving you guys a brief overview on what the cloud is, what it can do, and what are the features that come with it. I'll be also tackling uh, about some verticals that we can approach with the new features that we have, and then a bit of updates on what's more to come. So Ingenious Cloud is an AI-driven platform, uh, which we launched about two years ago. So the main focus on the cloud is for wireless LAN management or network control. So you can use Ingenious Cloud to manage your cloud switches and cloud access points as well, both indoor and outdoor. So for the full platform, we have the indoor and outdoor APs. We have the layer two plus switches, uh, POV and non-POV, as well as the portal itself. So we also have a companion app, which is Ingenious cloud to go which you can utilize to fully manage your system, even when on the go. So one thing about the cloud is usually when we introduce cloud to people, they would ask us, okay, so uh, where is your server built and how do we know that it's secure? So what we use for the cloud system is an FAS design or function as a service. So it's a bit different from what other brands would commonly use. Usually their cloud systems would either be hosted on a VM system or a Docker-based system to make it more efficient. The thing about FAS is that it's very scalable. Uh, we can upgrade the system without uh, having to have much downtime. Uh, usually when cloud vendors upgrade a system or add new functions, they would have to go on to a long maintenance period, maybe about four or five hours. So with, with Ingenious, if let's say we want to upgrade a system to cater more devices or to add more hosts to support more users or maybe to add more functions, we can do this on the fly. Or if we're going to have to rebuild a database, it roughly takes just a full hour. Now, when it comes to security, we use multi-factor authentication to talk to our devices, such as an APs. So every time you would want to send out information to their devices, maybe change configuration, change SSID, 
or add new functions, there would always be an exchange of uh, keys here, what, which would make the tunnel very secure. Now, everything that happens on the local data plane, let's say from your mobile devices, going to the access points, going to the internet, or anything that goes on the local network, that's kept there on the local side. So none of that data will be sent over to the server. Our server, by the way, it's hosted on AWS or Amazon Web Services. So we have a, a backup system in place. So even if, let's say, one of Amazon data centers go offline, there would still be a redundant server uh, that would work so that you would still have full access to your system. Now, for the cloud, we our goal is to make it easy for everyone to understand what's going on. So we have this uh, tools, set of tools for monitoring, which would help, uh, help clients quickly understand uh, what's happening on their network. So we have the Network Health Center, which will give you an overview on the whole system. If you have a APs that are online or offline, or let's say APs that are experiencing interference, the system will let you know right away. Later on, I'll give you more details about it as I walk you through the user interface. And then we have the floor plan view. So the floor plan view is basically your uh, layout, your physical layout, where your access points are. You can upload your floor plan on the map. And then from there, you can also plot obstacles. So for instance, you want to know the heat map coverage of your AP. If you have a concrete wall, wooden door, glass window, etc. So you would see how the signal propagates depending on the settings on your device. We recently update this to add virtual APs as well. So that means if you have, let's say physical APs, and let's say you want to uh, know what the signal will be if you change the model or if you add a new model, so you can put virtual APs there to check what their coverage is. So we also have client network timeline. So what client network timeline does is it acts as your client journey. So when a client connects to the access point, and let's say he roams, he moves to another radio, 2.4 to 5 gig or vice versa, and then he disconnects. So all that information will be on the system. So you would know when he first connected to the access point. If he has any issues, the system will alert you as well. So let's say it's a, an office network or a maybe a hotel network. If somebody types in the password wrongly, then the system would inform you that this person is not able to connect because he keyed in the wrong password. So instead of having to go to a lot of troubleshooting to figure that out, the system will inform you right away. We also support real-time diagnostics on the devices. So basically this would tell you the health of the APs and switches. Uh, if you're worried about if the AP is overloaded with the number of users or too much processing happening, so that will give you information in real time as well. So you would get information on the CPU memory as well as the throughput. Throughout the user interface, we have AI-driven advisories. So in case you have any issues on your network, the system will let you know. And throughout the menu system as well, the system will let you know, for instance, if uh, there's an issue, it would try to advise you what to do to solve the problem. Topology view is supported on the cloud. So this means if you have ingenious switches and ingenious access points, and you would want to know how they are physically connected, regardless of how many devices you have, it would give you the path on that topology from the AP to the switches to the router. So if you have mesh uh, APs that, that are a link on your current system that would show you the mesh topology as well. So you would know the RSI level between your access points, the signal quality, and then which port the AV is connected to. Uh, is it running PoE or is it plugged by power adapter? What the cable speed is, as well as if you have third party devices that are plugged into our switch, so long as it supports LLDP or Link Layer Discovery Protocol, it would also appear on your topology view. So if it's a third-party access point, third-party switch, a uh, SIP phone, any IP device, uh, basically, it would show there as well. So for the cloud system, it's very important to have a reporting function. So this would allow you to have an overview or a summary on what's going on on your network. So the reports can be scheduled. It can be, it can be triggered, let's say, um, maybe every Monday at 9 a.m. you want to send this report. So you can trigger that on the system. 
if let's say for example you have MSPs or SIs that want to send a daily report or a weekly report to the end user, so they can trigger that on the system as well. The report is fully customizable, so you can select what types of report you want to generate. Let's say it's for the uh, SSID information, summary of the settings, maybe the floor plan view, the agnostics and everything. So you, you can select which items would appear in that report. For the Wi-Fi system, we support layer seven awareness or application analysis. So what this would do is it will give you information on what are the commonly used apps on the network that are consuming bandwidth. So for instance, you wanna monitor um, which application con consumes the most bandwidth. By default, the system has this enabled. So you can check, for instance, YouTube consumption, uh, Skype, FaceTime, uh, Zoom uh, data consumption, even Windows or, or iOS updates. So you'd get a summary either for your whole organization or per site or per network. And then we have the Ingenious cloud to go app. This is available for iOS and Android devices. So what it does is it acts as a companion app for the cloud portal. So you can just use your existing cloud accounts to log in on the same app. And then from there, you'd be able to see your system. If you want to change, let's say, for example, captive portal um, of your profile or let's say security settings or switch settings, you can modify that as well on the cloud to go app. One thing nice about the app is that we have a built-in wizard as well. So let's say you have clients that maybe they are a Wi-Fi retail store. Maybe they sell, sell networking equipment. So the clients can just purchase an access point off the shelf instead of having to train uh, the customer on how to use a cloud system. They can just tell them to, hey, you can download the cloud to go app. From there, it's going to walk you through the wizard. So the wizard would actually walk them through installation setting up the APs physically, and then setting up the Wi-Fi settings on the, on the network as well, even without having to pull up a browser or having to go to um, uh, basically accessing the, 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 the unit. So even with just a cloud to go app, they'd be able to fully manage the cloud system. So what we have for the cloud are basically these access points. So I'll go through them in brief. We have a wall plate AP, the ECW115. This is used for smart deployments. Let's say smart rooms, smart offices, or smart hotels, wherein they integrate different IP services as well as, of course, the Wi-Fi system for the clients. So it comes with multiple LAN ports so that you are able to utilize, let's say, an IP phone, an IP TV service using the same device. So it's like having a switch built in on the access point. And then we have our ceiling mount models. ECW120 is a Wave 2 uh, 2 by 2 device. And then we have Wi-Fi 6 2 by 2 as well as Wi-Fi 6 4 by 4 AP. Now, usually Wi-Fi 6 is used for high-density environment. Uh, but if you want a more efficient network, uh, of course, a bigger bandwidth as well uh, for the Wi-Fi system. So these are the devices to lo uh, look at. For outdoor deployments, we also have a 2x2 two two Wi-Fi 5 AP and 2x2 two two Wi-Fi 6 access point. Now, for the new features that we have recently released, uh, this can help you tackle uh, more verticals or more clients. So one of them is the retail segment. So usually for the retail sector, maybe let's say, uh, coffee shops, restaurants, cafes, and want to deploy a simple Wi-Fi service. Usually providing this for the guests is the least of their priority. Uh, maybe they would allocate less budget on that. So for the retail staff or the retail se segment, let's say imagine a coffee shop uh, chain. Um, they really wouldn't uh, allocate like a single staff just to focus on IT on every branch. So they would want something that's easy to set up, maybe plug and play and with less maintenance. So for the retail sector, we have Facebook Wi-Fi integration. So when I say fa Facebook Wi-Fi integration, it's not just logging in using your social media account and that's it, you're connected to Wi-Fi. It has more, um, I would say, deeper integrations with Facebook because with Facebook Wi-Fi, what it does is 
you can utilize a Facebook platform to uh, basically deploy your Wi-Fi system. So imagine guests walking in on a cafe. When they connect to the SSID that was set up by uh, the SI or the end user, the splash page they would see is the business page of the cafe. So if they have a Facebook business page or an Instagram business page, this would be their splash page. And then from there, it will prompt them to either check in if it's a Facebook page or follow on Instagram. So after they click on that, basically they would be logged in on the system and get free Wi-Fi. Now, the cafe owner afterwards, he can generate reports on Facebook side. So when he logs into Facebook under the page, they would see insights. So from there, they can see how many people have checked in on the Wi-Fi system today and the past months as well. So from there, they can check how many unique clients they have and how many recurring clients they have on the system. Now, because Facebook has a good advertising platform, you can also uh, select the cate uh, category to broadcast the um, ads. So for instance, he wants to create promotions just for the people who have checked in on his place or followed him on Instagram. So from there, uh, they can select that um, um, advertisement group to blast out for those people. Now, it's also very easy to set up basically on Ingenious Cloud. They can also do this fully on the Ingenious Cloud to go app. All they need to do is sign in using the admin of their Facebook page. And then from there, they can set, for instance, would they want to use Instagram or Facebook login? And also they can select um, the, the time frame, like how long do you want guests to be able to use uh, utilize your Wi-Fi system. Is it 30 minutes and they'll be kicked out afterwards or two hours or more than that? So that can be set on the system. So it's very easy to set up. All they need to have is maybe one ECW120 and then the application. And then from there, basically it's um, uh, something that they can easily do even by themselves. Now, for campus and enterprise environment, usually they will look for features that have high security, uh, something that can assist them in terms of managing the network. Usually, they would have a bigger scale of a network, more VLANs. Sometimes they would have BYOD setups or bring your own device setups. So they need something that can be customized. So we launched uh, this set of features in the past couple of months, which will help you um, tackle this verticals. So first is my PSK and dynamic VLAN. So what it is, is let's say, imagine you have a single SSID. Instead of having one security password for everyone and then one VLAN as well, like we usually do. Here you can have different VLANs, which makes it dynamic, as well as different uh, passwords per person. So imagine this setup is a campus environment uh, maybe Lucy and Mary here are students, and then we have uh, Brian, who's a faculty staff. So let's say Mary and Lucy logs in on the access point. So regardless of which AP they connect to, or even if it's a multi-SSID setup, uh, regardless of the SSID, if they connect to the network, they would always carry their existing passwords, and they would always be connected to their own VLAN. So if it's a student VLAN where they can access their information, their grades, and all that, so they would be always put there depending on um, basically their PSK or their user, your, your, your key. So when Brian logs into the Wi-Fi system, even if the same system that Lucy and Mary are using, he would be sent to VLAN 30, which here is the faculty VLAN. So he'd be able to access the server. Maybe the, the, the administrator can also allocate a bigger bandwidth uh, for Brian to use. So there are a lot of things that you can use with um, IPSK and dynamic VLAN. The nice thing about this is if the client has an existing database, let's say a radius server uh, that already does have this information, so we can also link on that. We also support VLAN pooling. So what this does is it allows you to dynamically assign VLAN for each new clients to connect. Usually uh, people would use this to have multiple clusters of your VLAN network to, li to limit the broadcast size. So instead of having one big network uh, for all the clients, maybe a class B subnet, 
what we what people would do is they would set up multiple class C subnets instead and allocate this on the system. So for instance, you have a range of VLANs 50 to 200 for your client pool. So what the system would do is after keying in that range, it will randomly allocate that VLAN to the individual clients. So let's say the first client connects to VLAN 50, second client connects to VLAN 51, third client connects to VLAN 52, and so on and so forth until uh, your whole system is spread out for their for your clients. So instead of doing that individually per SSID, they can all be set even on one single SSID. Now to further limit uh, broadcast on the, on the network so that the Wi-Fi system will always be optimized. We also support BCMC suppression or broadcast to multicast suppression. What this does is it would allow the access point to filter out all types of broadcasts on the wired network, except for DHCP and ARP, so that the wireless clients would still obtain an IP address and be able to talk to each other. So other than that, the rest of the broadcast that may spam the network would not cross over the Wi-Fi system. So this is to ensure that the Wi-Fi system would always be healthy uh, with all the necessary packets in there. So the rest of the things that would spam the network would be blocked off totally. So it's also very easy to set up. It's just, as, it's just an enable or disable button. Now, uh, for random Mac connections, because iOS 14 and later, as well as Android 10 and the newer versions, added a feature to randomize the Mac address on the mobile device. So it's good for privacy to protect you from, let's say you're connecting on a private or a public network, let's say a public hotspot. It's, it's something to protect your identity or to hide your actual Mac, Mac, Mac address of your device. The issue with random connections or uh, random Mac connections is that if you are connecting on a corporate network, an office network, or maybe a network that requires Mac authentication, you're going to have issues connecting because your Mac is randomized and it's actually enabled by default on iOS and Android devices. Now, to solve this issue, we added a block random Mac connection button or a toggle on the system, which has a splash page as well. So if the system detects that you are using a random Mac, um, random Mac address on your device, and then you connect to the SSID, you would get a splash page if you enable it and inform you that, hey, you have been denied access because um, you are using random Macs. And then you can, uh, you, can, you can customize this message right here, which would teach uh, the, the guests or the clients how to disable random Macs on their phone to be able to uh, connect on the system. So this would solve the issues wherein the IT manager is not able to authenticate guests because they're all using random Mac connections. Or if it's an office network, they are not able to identify who the people are when they connect to the system because they are connecting on different Macs that are recorded from the system, especially in BYOD systems or setups. So this can help a lot. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken on the market, there are only three vendors that does this right now. Now, for integration on enterprise or campus environments, usually they would have an existing directory service, maybe Windows AD, uh, Google LDAP, or any third-party LDAP server. In the past, if we want to authenticate using the services, we're going to have to use a third-party Radius server to act as a middleman. So now in the cloud, on the latest update, you are able to integrate directly with any Active Directory service, LDAP server, or even Google Cloud. So in the future, we'll be adding support for Microsoft Azure as well, because a lot of people are slowly shifting from Active Directory to Microsoft Azure Active Directory on the cloud. So they'll be able to utilize that as well. So integration with LDAP or AD services can be done either through a captive portal or directly through uh, WPA3 or WPA2 Radius or Enterprise. So from there, they can select the option from the list, what type of directory service you are using. And if you have, uh, let's say, certificates, you can import it or export it right here.
We added features as well, which would help manage service providers. Usually MSPs would have multiple clients on hand, so they would want something that's a quick fix if there are any issues. Maybe they would have uh, no time for training because they have multiple brands to juggle. And then they would want something that they can easily revert in case they make any uh, mistakes when, when they apply it on the system. So for MSPs, first, the schedule reports can help them a lot because instead of having to um, create a manual summary on what the setup is and report it for the client, they can just select it on the system what type of information I want to be displayed, they can modify the templates. And then from there, they can schedule it uh, and send it to the client. So they can select the coverage as well. Let's say one week worth of data for the whole 30 days or full month worth of data. They can also select if they want to have the information just for a particular branch or for the whole organization and send it out automatically to the client. We also have a backup and restore system on the cloud. Now, since the system is basically built on the cloud, each setting that you have on your AP or switch or network would already be backed up on the cloud. Uh, this is an additional option just in case the client wants to, let's say, uh, store preset settings. So for instance, you have uh, multiple administrators, you have multi-tenancy, and then you're working on multiple branches. So let's say one of the admins or one of your sub-admins sub messes up in terms of configuration and you don't know what options he modified or he forgot. So you can quickly restore from a backup that you have, basically your original settings. And then you can also use this backup when you're setting up a new site. So let's say it's a client that have multiple branches. First, you create your first branch, and then you, mo you modify your settings, add the access points there. And then in setting up the new branch, usually you would have to start all over uh, and copy whatever you have on the first branch. So if you already back up that configuration, you can use this as a template to build your second branch. So basically from there, all you need to do is add the devices in. All the settings configuration would already be there. Now, there are other features that we have already added on the cloud, especially for our corporate and enterprise clients. So we have client balancing. What this would do is basically it's load balancing for the access points. If it's a multi-site or sorry, multi-AP deployment, let's say it's a, a function room, auditorium, or event center wherein they have multiple APs that are close to each other. Instead of having the clients connect to a single AP, because that's where they're uh, closest to, the system can spread them out across your access points so that no single AP would be overloaded. We also added MAC authentication. So what this would do is it would allow uh, MSPs or ISPs or uh, clients that are working with hotspot gateway vendors to uh, easily modify each setting for e individual users. So this works with radius bandwidth control, uh, radius COA support as well. Wherein, for instance, each client connection has a different package. For instance, one client has 50 uh, gigabytes bandwidth allocation. Another client has 20 gigabyte bandwidth allocation. Uh, maybe they have different speed tiers as well. The other one is capped at five Mbps while another user has uh, 10 Mbps or 100 Mbps, depending on his tier, especially if it's a paid Wi-Fi or a system wherein they have different client tiers, maybe VIPs as well. So even if they are connecting with, to a single SSID, that can be fully customized through the external radius. So we also support PoE scheduling. Uh, what this would do is, if let's say you have third-party uh, devices, uh, that are utilizing PoE connected to our switches, and maybe you want to turn off those devices at a particular time, or you just want to trigger a reboot. So you can schedule that on the switch as well. We also added SNMP monitoring. So what this would do is, for instance, you have uh, clients that have an existing monitoring server um, that are that's using SNMP. Usually they would use this if they are working with multiple vendors, different brands, so that they can consolidate all monitoring in one, one view, one pane. So from there, 
uh, they can trigger SNMP. Basically, they just have to enable this on our system and they can already monitor it externally. Uh, by the way, we also support API monitoring. So if clients have, uh, again, a third-party monitoring server, wherein they consolidate multiple vendors and multiple brands. So they can also use either SNMP or API to pull information from the cloud. So for multiple switch deployments, uh, imagine you have multiple rooms that have the same layout. Let's say one room, you have an IP phone, IP TV, uh, other IP services plug in the switch. Maybe you're utilizing the same ports, same VLANs and everything. Instead of having to configure those switches one by one, you can apply uh, the switch templates for a bulk of your switches so that they'll be uh, applying it to all the devices, simplifying your configuration and saving you time as well. So like I mentioned, we support virtual APs on the floor plan. So if you, even if you don't have the physical access point with you and you just want to see what this particular model uh, heat, um, this this unit's heat map will be if you put it on the floor plan. You can select any cloud model from the list, and from there it would simulate your heat map for you. So what's more? Uh, well, I mean, what what what's what devices are upcoming for the cloud, and what other features we have in store? So this maybe about December. Uh, December this year, we have uh, the ECW 632 coming and 735 later this uh, later next year. So basically, this is a 4x4 Wi-Fi 6 model. The other one is tri-band Wi-Fi 6E. So tri-band Wi-Fi 6E means to have a 2.4 gigahertz radio, 5 gigahertz radio, and a 6 gigahertz radio. So that's the latest Wi-Fi technology to handle a, a very high dense environment. So if you want to cater to maybe 1,000 or 1,500 users, this AP would be able to support that. Now, what's special between these two access points? So we tag them as pro APs because it comes with additional features. So built in is a scanning radio and Bluetooth, which would be used for these functions. So first is zero weight DFS. Uh, DFS means dynamic frequency selection. What this does, what, what, what this does is if you have an access point and you're deploying it, let's say, outdoors or indoors, but let's say it's near the airport or near a, um, near a shipyard. Uh, when the access point is using a particular set of channels, the DFS frequencies, so let's say channel 120, and then it detects a radar device nearby that's broadcasting on the same channel, usually your AP would stand by or switch to a different channel or be offline for like 10 minutes maximum to allow that radar device to broadcast because it's definitely broadcasting an important signal. Now, this is uh, man mandated for all access points in the market to recognize DFS. So with the help of that additional scanning radio, in advance, it can detect if there is a radar device nearby. So immediately, it will just switch to a channel not occupied by this system to have uh, less disruptions on their Wi-Fi network. Basically, it will allow you to fully utilize your 5 gigahertz spectrum. Now, because of that scanning radio, you are able to generate real-time information as well on the statistics or the network traffic on your area. You would be able to detect Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi interference sources so that from there, the system can utilize that information to have a better auto-channeling response. Now, uh, the biggest advantage of that uh, of the pro models is the security. So it comes with the wireless intrusion detection system and the wireless intrusion protection system as well. So for wireless attacks or for Wi-Fi hacking, or let's say Wi-Fi spoofing, wherein clients can just set up another access point and copy your SSID information to trick clients to connect there. So that can be prevented by the system automatically. So it would scan for the rogues and also uh, prevent them or prevent your clients from connecting there as well. And then the Bluetooth uh, integrated module would be used for industrial IoT integration. So you can use this for location-based marketing, uh, client footprint, tr footprint tracking, or yeah, marketing information pushed on Bluetooth. So imagine if you're deploying multiple access points inside a shopping mall, you'd be able to 
uh, accurately push marketing blast uh, to a person based on their location. For instance, he's walking into one of this um, sports store. So from there, you can broadcast information such as, hey, we have a 20% off discount on the store today, et cetera, et cetera. So from there, basically, it will generate more uh, revenue for the client. So uh, next year, we'll also be launching features that can help clients uh, on different functions. One is IPsec VPN support. So this would be built in on the access point. What it means is, like right now, there are a lot of people working from home. So what this would do is, if people want to connect to the office network, instead of having to set up a, a separate uh, VPN software or a dedicated VPN hardware at home just to connect on the office network. So here, the access point itself would act as a VPN client to connect to that office network. So at home, you may have maybe one or two SSIDs. So first SSID is for normal use for your family. So they can connect to Wi-Fi as usual, connect to the internet. And then your second SSID may be dedicated for your work. So when you connect to your second SSID, that would uh, create a VPN tunnel going to your office. So from there, you'd be able to work as usual as if you're connected to the office network. So you can download files from your NAS or access any server on the office. And then we have SSID settings on LAN. So that means uh, the wallplay APs, let's say you have SSID settings enabled um, let's say captive portal, you have that enabled on the SSID and a T mode so that the AP would act as a DHCP server and maybe your white and black listing as well. So this can be carried over on the LAN side. So uh, when guests plug in on the LAN port, they'd be able to get that same splash page. They would have DHCP server from the network as well. And if you're blocking specific devices, that would be applied on LAN as well. So this would come uh, later next year. Uh, one of the more exciting hardware that we'll be releasing is the Ingenious Security Gateway. Now, this would act as a gateway, a firewall, a router, as well as a, a filtering system. So basically, it's um, an all-in-one device uh, built uh, or backed by OpenSense. So you can utilize this to fully complete your uh, network. So from here, in, uh, if, if let's say you want to uh, filter certain sites or filter certain applications, allocate bandwidth depending on what apps the clients are using, you'd be able to modify that or implement that using the system. So more details would be launched maybe late this year or early next year. Now for the cloud, uh, since uh, we're using the cloud system, we actually have two license tiers. One is basic, which is fully free and it's com it comes built into all devices. And then the other license is the professional uh, level. So depending on uh, the type of user and the feature consumption, we have different tiers to fit the clients. Most of the deployments, I would say maybe 80%, 70 to 80% of the deployments, the basic uh, license is more than enough for them. But for pro users, let's say they want to fully utilize the Wi-Fi system, uh, they want to use all the advanced functions, then the pro license would be for them. We haven't actually launched a licensing system. Uh, tentative launch is December, uh, December this year. Uh, but during the launch phase, we're going to give uh, free one-year access for everybody using the cloud system so that they'll be able to try what the pro features are, as well as for new purchases after that. There will be a one-year free license for uh, the, the, the pro usage. So basically, we're only going to charge for the pro license roughly around 2023. So right now, uh, both basic and pro license would be enabled for all. Uh, but just a quick reference and what are the differences between this. So for, for the basic license, um, it's the same as a pro. There's no limit on how many APs or switches you can manage, regardless if it's uh, 50 sites. Uh, 100 or 1,000 or, or 100,000 APs, you'd be able to manage all of them under the basic license. The difference is on the storage or information. 
Now, uh, this can still change uh, in the future, uh, but for now, this is what we have. So for instance, dashboard analysis and data stored on the cloud, that would be 24 hours on basic license, 30 days for pro. A maximum network on the organization. So there's no limit on the organization itself. Uh, if a cloud account can have hundreds of orgs and each organization is actually independent of each other. So one organization can be under the basic license, another org can be under professional. Uh, you can mix all of that under the same account. But inside the org where you have your different networks or different branches, different sites, under the basic license, you can have 50 and there's no limit under pro. Uh, maximum admin users or sub accounts, let's say sub admins under your multi-tenancy is five under basic, no limit for pro. And then um, the, the cloud authentication, internal authentication on the cloud. If you want to use the cloud-based um, authentication system for your user management, you can have 100 uh, for basic, 100 entries. This shares with the voucher, um, the hotspot system, the voucher creation as well. And then 10,000 for pro. Device diagnostics is available for both. In terms of change log notifications, you get more details when using the pro because that would consume more, um, more, more instances on the cloud side. And then the backup and restore system is under pro. API integration, if let's say you want to integrate with a third-party service or a third-party system that requires to pull or push information on our cloud, uh, maybe have a platform dedicated to control all our devices across different brands. Let's say you want to configure the SSID, or you want to generate a new user, et cetera. So that can be all be synchronized using API. For the reporting system, under the basic license, you can generate a, uh, a single report uh, on the cloud. This can be stored in the cloud. And then under Pro, you can generate 3,000 reports to be stored on the cloud. For topology view, you can view ECS and EWS switches. Uh, using the basic license. For the pro license, you can view third-party devices as well. For heat map uh, and floor plan view, you can view both under the basic and pro license. But in terms of plotting obstacles, uh, plotting virtual APs, so that you can see the heat map coverage of your device. So that would be under the pro license as well. So client timeline exposure and analysis is under pro. And MSP rebranding is under pro as well. So MSP rebranding means if you have, let's say, clients that are MSPs or ISPs and they have allocated viewer access to their end users. So instead of seeing uh, the Ingenious logo, they can customize this as their own logo instead. So uh, again, uh, the basic and pro license is available right now for everyone. Uh, the pro license would be available for everyone for one year uh, as a free trial. So that's for existing and uh, new accounts or new devices uh, when we launch the licensing system. So some of the features that um, falls under Pro as well as basic. So Facebook Wi-Fi can be utilized by everyone, uh, but the rest of integration, especially with third-party integration would require the Pro license. Uh, but again, this is still subject to change uh, until we launch the licensing system. So any questions before I walk you guys through the user interface? Uh, I think we had one earlier on, which was uh, the BCMC suppression. Does the feature require an ingenious switch? Oh, okay. Yeah. For a BCMC suppression, you don't need to use an ingenious switch because this is the, the, the function is triggered on the access point side. So from the AP on its LAN port, it would filter the broadcast and multi -pack, uh, multicast packets from there. So I'm going through chat. I think there are some other questions here. Let me just go through them. Okay, I think Matthew have uh, answered the other questions here. So let me guys, uh, let me pull up the interface so I can walk you guys through just a moment.
Okay, so this is a cloud interface. You can access this uh, this portal through cloud.ngenius.ai. So from there, you can uh, either log in or sign up using these uh, services. So if you have an existing Ingenious Partner Portal account, you can actually use that as a single sign-on for the cloud as well. Uh, you can use Facebook, Google login as well. Or if you just want to use the cloud, um, using cloud system sign-in, you can just sign up from here too. So once you have logged in on the system, you would be brought onto the dashboard wherein you have general information on what's happening. So by the way, if you click on this icon right here, it would show you all the different organizations that you have that you're managing. And then under each organization would be the different networks or the different, let's say, branches that you have. So each organization right here can represent different clients. If let's say you have been invited as a team, team member to a different organization or to a new organization, that org would appear here on this list as well. So navigating to each different organization is as simple as double clicking on it. So for example, NVK, and then the Singapore office, or let's say you want to narrow down to a specific network, so you can just double click there. So on the main dashboard, you have a radar graph, which will give you a general information on the health of your network. So right now there's one AP that's offline. If I mouse over it, so it's telling me that, that the ECW 632 is offline right now. So because this AP is unplugged. If you have APs that are consuming too much resources, it would inform you here as well. So for the hardware, it gives you a summary on how many you have uh, your switches, your access points, and clients. You can also click on this button to navigate easily to those menus. And then you have your throughput information. Uh, you can change the view from a uh, weekly view, monthly view, or a daily view. And then when you hover your mouse over it, it will give you more detailed information. So in the bottom part, let me just expand this to a month. It's also give, gonna give you a summary on the overview traffic that you have. So on your access points, in terms of data consumption, upload and download, it's going to highlight that. Um, top clients, in terms of, again, data consumption and traffic. And then the top SSIDs. So you also have an overview on the top apps. Let's say you're using Layer 7 Awareness. It's going to give you a summary right here on which are most uh, mostly consuming the most bandwidth and a summary of the operating systems of your clients. So let's say, for example, how many Windows clients you have, Linux, Android, Mac, iOS, as well as other uh, operating system that there might be on the system. Now, the first part right here is your monitoring button. And then the second part is your configuration button. So you also have your logging here. Uh, this one is for uh, Sky Keys. So if you have an ingenious Sky Key, you can actually add that on the cloud as well. And the next version of our Easy Master can be added on the cloud too, so that you, you can remotely uh, manage them. So the bottom icons would represent the reporting function, multi-tenancy, and organization, wherein you have your inventory of the devices, licensing, and other options for security and restoring. So I, I won't go through the entire menu, but I'll just show you some. So let's say, for example, on the dash, uh, the access points view, view here you have your group of APs, but you can expand it further to get more information. So for instance, uh, what, what the throughput utilization is for the access point, and then the channel utilization, if you have high traffic or a lot of interference, it would be displayed right here. So you have quick override buttons so that you can quickly change, let's say the channel of the AP, uh, the transmit power channel width, you can override that. Uh, one nice thing is that the SSIDs can be overridden as well. So let's say I have five SSIDs, but on this particular AP, you want to en only enable one or let's say only four of them. So you can override and either enable or disable that particular SSID. So if you have mesh enabled on your system, you can also uh, remove one of your APs from connecting to that mesh network. 
Now, when you hover on this portion, you get more information, such as, such as the details page, where you, wherein you can get more details on your unit. You can reboot the AP from here, and you can also trigger a replace. So when you replace the device, basically what this would do is it would allow you to replace the unit with a similar model in case something goes wrong with the device. Maybe it doesn't power up or something happened to it. So you'd be able to quickly replace the unit and from the new unit, instead of setting it up from scratch, maybe it's a switch with a lot of VLANs already configured. When you use the replace function, it will port over all the existing uh, configuration from the old device to the new setup. So it simplifies the process of replacement. So going on to the details page, we get more information in terms of uh, the SSID, uh, in term, uh, let's say the captive portal, uh, security setting, how many clients are there, 2.4 or 5 gig. And then you have your real-time metrics on the side as well. So for topology view, this is how it will look like. So when you hover your mouse over a unit, it will tell you which port it's connected to. So right now it's connected to port seven of this switch. And then this cable is running one gig. And then from this switch going to the internet source or the router, it's from port five of this switch to the internet. So if you enable uh, the third party detection. So right now I can detect my EWS 7928P as well, which belongs to the NSKY family. For other networks, wait, let me just show you. Let me see if they have third-party devices. Okay, so here we go. So older device can be detected as well, like the EGS switch. Uh, this one is uh, a Microtech router, if I'm not mistaken. And then they have other APs right here. Uh, SIP phones can also be detected by the system. Uh, but basically, any third-party device that supports Link Layer Discovery Protocol and are plugged into our switch, they would be shown here as well. Okay, so for the SSID configuration, these are your SSID profiles. Let me just quickly um, uh, walk you through the different options that we have. So we have multiple security options for the SSID itself. So WPA2 and WPA3, uh, which is supported on all our cloud devices. Uh, My PSK can be enabled right here. And then you also have a QR code in case you want to connect or share access to QR. So basically you just have to scan the QR and then from there you'd be linked to the SSID and authenticated on the system without having to key in the password. So for WPA Enterprise, this is where you have your different LDAP options, uh, LDAP or AD services. And then uh, fast roaming is here. It's just a toggle to enable or disable. Uh, additional security, 802.11w, this would act as a, a protection from wireless attacks, de-authentication attacks, or forcing your clients to disassociate from the Wi-Fi system. This can protect that from happening. And then we also support NAT mode on the SSI, each SSID. So basically, if you want the AP to act as a DHCP server for it to provide IP addresses to the guests, so the, the range uh, can be changed from here, 172.16 or 10.0.0.8. Sorry, let me go back to the screen. So under NAT mode, it would also enable uh, client isolation. So the wireless clients would not be able to communicate with each other. So usually NAT mode is used for the guest Wi-Fi system. By default, it's set to bridge, which would basically let the clients obtain an IP from the existing DHCP server and give transparency on the network. Uh, further down, you have your VLAN setting. If you have a specific uh, VLAN option per SSID to segregate the network. 
uh, dynamic VLAN pooling, application analysis, which is enabled by default. This is basically the layer seven awareness. And then under advanced settings, you have options for layer two isolation, uh, band steering. You need to have both radios enabled to enable it. And then your BCMC suppression. So uh, yes, this one is enabled on the access point side and you don't need to have an ingenious switch for this to work. So other options for the SSID, you have your bandwidth limitations. So for instance, you have a um, public Wi-Fi deployment, or let's say this is for a cafe or restaurant. So you can limit the bandwidth consumption per client or per SSID so that um, nobody can hog the, the bandwidth. So let's say even if um, you have clients that are using torrents, streaming videos all day or downloading all day, their speed would be capped to 5 Mbps or the value that you have set. So this is to ensure that you still have enough bandwidth for everyone to utilize. Captive portal can be enabled right here. And we have multiple options for captive portal as well. So click through means um, splash and go. You would get the splash page, which is on the next screen, which they would see first and they have to click to authenticate. By the way, the splash page is fully customizable. Like you can just customize it from here on the system. You can change the logo. You can change the terms and conditions. You can change the button message. Um, you can also upload, let's say, a, a, a background. I think I have preset images right here. Let me just utilize this. So you can quickly change the background. Uh, if you want to put that as your logo, you can also insert that right here. So if you have pictures, you can easily scale it on the system as well. And then you have different views. If you, let's say you want to see how the splash page would look like on a phone. So it would look like this. So maybe you want to adjust it. If you want to change this logo, you can remove it as well. So if you want um, further customizations, you can also do that through HTML. So let's say you want to embed a video, uh, maybe a YouTube video here on the splash page, you can do that from here as well. So uh, again, click through is it will present a splash page and then the clients would have to click on proceed before they are able to authenticate. Uh, Ingenious Authentication is our internal authentication system. Uh, in, in, in case you don't have a radio server and then you want individual usernames and passwords. So on your splash page, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna look like this. So they're gonna have an option to key in their username and password before they are able to connect to the internet. And then custom radio server, if let's say you have an existing radio server as your database, or if you are using a third party hotspot gateway server to manage the users, so you can use this option right here. Uh, voucher service login. Uh, if let's say you want to give out vouchers and they would use that voucher uh, codes to connect your Wi Fi system, as an admin, you are able to add different plans right here. It's a one, uh, one hour access or one day access. This can be changed as well. And let's say for this voucher plan, uh, you want to allocate it just for one user or let's say five users right here. So once you apply that, the front desk, when they log in on the system using this uh, URL, they would have uh, an option to generate the different voucher plans depending on the uh, plans that the, the admin have created. And then you have social login. Uh, basically, to connect to the Wi-Fi system, you can log in through Facebook and authenticate. Uh, but again, using Facebook Wi-Fi, it's different uh, because after authentication, the system will gather information through Facebook in terms of network insights and uh, splash page integration as well, which the Facebook admin can utilize. So all they need to do is basically log in using Facebook, using their uh, Facebook page or Instagram page, and that's it. Now, different LDAP options are supported through the captive portal as well. Any third-party LDAP service, so you all need to just key in the information right here. Active Directory, if they have a Windows server, or Google LDAP for cloud-based uh, LDAP authentication. 
So you can also trigger what would happen after the client authenticates on your captive portal. Do you redirect them to a specific page or just let them browse as usual? You can also set up session timeouts from here to kick the client out automatically in case they go idle or after, let's say, every hour. So let's say after an hour, they would be kicked out on the system. When they reconnect, they'd see this same splash page again. So again, splash page is where you can customize the splash page itself. If you are using a third-party hotspot gateway server or a third-party web server, you can also key in that uh, right here if you already have an existing splash page. So for the SSID, they can also be triggered by schedule. So let's say this is for an office network that's only available every weekday, maybe 8 to 4 or 8 to 5. You can extend that from here. So what the system would do is after it hits, let's say, 8 p.m. on Monday, it would turn off the Wi-Fi or this particular SSID automatically to prevent clients from connecting. So in a way, it enhances security as well as conserve a bit of energy as well for your access point. And then you have, you have your access control list right here wherein you can uh, add um, clients that you have been blocked, that, that you want to block or prevent them from connecting, or you can set up VIPs as well. Uh, for the VIP list, it serves as two functions. First is a bypass for smart devices. So let's say you have captive portal enabled, um, and then you have a smart speaker, wireless printer, or maybe a any smart device that cannot authenticate on Captive Portal. Usually, those devices would be able to connect on the Wi-Fi system. You can key in the Wi-Fi password. But if you have a splash page for a secondary authentication, that's where the devices will get stuck. So to allow those smart devices to, buy, to bypass a Captive Portal, you can put them on your VIP list. So the secondary feature of, of the VIP list would act as a whitelist, even if you have, um, let's say, isolation enabled. So let's say right here you have L2 isolation. This would block access to all wired devices and wireless devices on the system. So if I enable this and I connect to this system, I won't be able to see all the wired devices for security as well as other wire, wireless devices. So if you add, let's say, your wired printer under the VIP list, even under L2 isolation, you'd be able to uh, see that wireless printer as well. So I think I skipped something under uh, monitoring. So under the client list, you can actually view uh, change the view for the entire month. This is where you can see all the clients that ever connected to your SSID or network. So essentially all the clients within the 30 day span. So here you'd be able to see your commonly used applications as well. Let me expand this here. Let's say Facebook consumption, Apple updates, Windows updates, uh, Amazon data, YouTube, Spotify, etc. So you'd be able to see the bandwidth consumption for each of the service. Uh, for example, Microsoft Windows updates that would be displayed here as well. This view can be narrowed down per network, uh, like what I have right now, or for the whole organization. And then for each of your clients, you can also click on them to view more information for your client timeline. Uh, right now, nobody's at the office, so I don't have any data, but this is one of the servers that we have. So from here, I can see the connection of the server when it connected to Wi-Fi. So it seems like it connected at 3.50 a.m. Um, yesterday. And then it connected to this access point on this SSID. This was the signal coverage that it had. It was connected on channel 40. So I'd be able to see the bandwidth consumption as well. And if it moved to a different um, AP, you'd be able to see that from the list as well. So if you have clients that are that have difficulty connecting, that would appear on this list too. Uh, exposure analysis is another feature that we have. It works with client timeline. Basically, what this does is it will allow you to uh, see who's in close proximity of a specific person. 
Uh, I don't have data right now because nobody's in the office. But basically, if you have, if you want to do like let's say contact tracing, or maybe you want to use this for attendance, you can use this, utilize this information as well. For the switch, uh, for the switches on the cloud. Uh, the nice thing about it is that you have full visualization on the ports. So like this eight port, eight port switch that I have, I can quickly see which the uplink port is. That's port five right here, uh, uh, identified by that arrow. I can see the tagging. I can also see which ports are running PoE. So let, right now, port seven and eight has access points plugged into them, and then it's running PoE. I can also see the VLAN tagging. So for instance, ports five, seven, and eight are tagged under VLAN 10. And then for VLAN one, five, seven, and eight plus port two as well. So going to the details page, you can get more information and more configuration options for that switch. So you have your PoE utilization, utilization per port, and then you have your system configuration. So let's say spanning tree options, linked layer discovery, voice VLAN, et cetera. Uh, the port settings can be configured right here. Say the port speed, uh, PoE, if you want to disable it, isolation, rate limiting, flow control, POS, that can be configured from here. Uh, VLAN is something that you can easily configure on the cloud. So for instance, this switch has uh, three ports tagged right now. If you want to, let's say, change the tagging of port two, you can just click on it to remove the tagging. If you want to add untagged ports, you can quickly add them here as well. So once you're satisfied with the setting, just click on uh, the check mark and apply to apply it to this switch. So port mirroring can be configured here as well. PoE scheduling. Uh, this is where you can configure that. So similar to Wi-Fi scheduling, if you want specific ports to be offline at a particular time, so you can set that from here on the system. If you want to trigger like a POE reset, so you can set that from here as well. And then you have your link aggregation options and your log information for the switch. For the floor plan view, by the way, you can view the APs on the map as well. Let me add one AP on the map. So when you add a unit on the map, uh, basically you can view information such as if it's online, you have your RAN IP, LAN IP, channel, throughput, and how many clients are connected to it. Now, if you go onto the floor plan view, this is where you have your heat map, uh, heat map display. So let me just quickly show you this one. So right now I have two APs, and then this one is actually a virtual AP, uh, which you can easily delete. So let's say you want to, you're planning to expand your Wi-Fi system, or you just want to see how uh, the system would look like if you're using a another model. So let's say, let's use the uh, ECW230. I'm going to add one. And then all you need to do is drag that on the map, uh, depending on where you want to set it up. You can check on the settings. You can adjust the transmit power. And then when you click on the heat map right here, by the way, the, the walls are already plotted right here. So I already put that beforehand. When you click on, click on the heat map function, then you can see the coverage of your APs depending on what you have on the walls. So this is for the 2.4 gigahertz band. You can also switch the view to five gigahertz. 5 gigahertz would usually have a smaller coverage versus 2.4. So that's your signal propagation. Um, here, based on the legend, a, a red means strong signal. As you hover your mouse, you would see your estimated RSSI coverage. So the closer the number is to zero, the higher the signal. Uh, as you move away uh, from the access point, you can see that the signal degrades. So from here, you can quickly see if you have dead spots, if you have areas that need Wi-Fi concentration, maybe you can move this AP right here in this room. 
so that you would see its uh, heat map. So let me regenerate that. And you can see that now I have a stronger signal here. So you can use this for planning and you can also export this data using the reporting function. So for the reporting function, here you can create multiple uh, tasks or schedules on what types of report you want to generate. So let me generate a new task right here. So you can select the templates. We have different options right here. So let's say, let, let's use a simple one. Uh, put it in title, report for testing. So here you can also customize a logo that would appear right here. You can upload your own logo. And then, and then you can select what types of uh, report you want to generate. So let's say you want to generate all the information. You can just click on that or you can customize each of them. So once you're satisfied with your choice, go next. And then from here, you can select uh, what, what, we, what, we, what, what would be the scope of the report. Is it for the whole organization that I'm currently in? Or is it a, for a specific uh, site or branch? So from there, you can select the period. So would the report be for uh, the past 30 days, the past week? Is it for all the SSIDs or a sp specific one? And would this uh, report be generated weekly? So you can set the schedule right here. Or is it a one-time report? So you can set that as well. So email is, if you key in an email right here, it would send that report on that person or just be generated on here, right here on the system if you don't want to put anybody right here. So when you click on next, it's gonna give you a summary of your report and let me apply this task. So now on the reports page, it's uh, generating that report right here on the system. It takes about a couple of minutes. And let me pull up a, a sample report from here to show you guys how it would look like. Okay, I, I hope you're still seeing my screen. So this is a sample report that it, uh, that I have. It's in PDF format. So it's gonna give you a table of contents. Uh, the network summary, basically the items you have selected, the overview of your, uh, of your dashboard, throughput consumption, uh, traffic information, SSID information, and then you have your client information. Uh, application analysis would be here as well. Uh, summary of your SSID and channel settings and the device that you have. So the more device that you have, the more options that you have, the longer this report would be. Uh, your map view, and then you have your floor plan view as well, if you selected it on the, on the report. If you have multiple floors or multiple sites, that would be displayed here as well. and your switch settings, as well as your topology view. So again, it's fully customizable and, and it can be done in schedule. So yeah, right now this report is already done. So it, it just takes like a couple of minutes for it to generate. And then from there you can straight away download it or if it's on a schedule, it will be sent automatically to that person. So for multi-tenancy, uh, this is your uh, view from here. So from here, you can easily invite new members uh, as a part of your uh, multi-tenancy system. So all you need to do is type in the email address and say, and then from there, you can select their permission. Are they a viewer or an admin for the whole organization? Or let's say for specific sites, so maybe for this SSID, they can generate vouchers as a front desk staff. Uh, maybe he's an admin on this third floor network and viewer access on this uh, test network. So you can easily customize the different tiers from here. 
if you want to modify an existing person's um, policies, you can change that from here as well. Or if you if you want to remove a, a person from the system, you can easily do that here too. Under inventory and licenses, this is where you manage your access points. On the system, you can see when an access point was registered. It was registered by which of your admins. Um, right now, they're on which network or which, um, what is your AP name? You can almost see that information from here. So registering a cloud device is very easy as well. Basically, all you need is the serial number of the unit uh, to register the device. So you can either use the Cloud to Go app or this system to key in multiple uh, devices in bulk. So speaking of the mobile app, uh, let me share that uh, view to you guys. Hopefully the screen sharing works, uh, just a minute. Okay, <clears throat> uh, hopefully you guys see my mobile screen, uh, just a minute. Okay, so this is the Cloud Go app, which you can download from iOS or the Google platform. Uh, right now I'm using the, uh, the developer app so I can test the beta functions, but it's uh, available and it's live right now on uh, the system. So right here, you can view your, the different organizations that you have, uh, similar to what I just shown you guys. So whatever you have on the cloud portal would appear here as well. It looks different because I'm using, I think I'm using night mode right now. Wait, let me change the view for you guys. Okay, there we go. So switching to different organizations is similar on the cloud. So let's say I select Singapore office. So from here, you have a summary of all your devices. You have your switch, your APs, and different networks as well. So let's say I want to go to uh, SG Office Network. So you have the same info as on the cloud. You have the same um, our radar graph. And then you have a summary of your throughput, client information below. <clears throat> so on the bottom part of the screen, I'm not sure if you guys are seeing my mouse as well. Uh, I have my devices right here. So these are your access points. So similarly, when I click on it, you would have uh, a summary of it, which you can also override certain settings. So you have the radio options, IP assignment and everything. If you want to view your real-time metrics, you can also do that from here. So just have to wait for it to load and connect to your mobile device. Takes a few seconds. There we go. So from here, you can also trigger the replace function, the reboot function. You can also view your logs. Uh, you can also upload a photo to help you identify where the unit is uh, uh, deployed. So navigate your switches, you would also have that same view on the cloud. If you want to see the ports, it would appear here as well for easy viewing. <clears throat> and then client list, uh, these are the servers that are connected right now because uh, nobody's right there. So it's smart speaker, uh, one of the CPEs and then the easy master server. By the way, we have client uh, timeline enabled here as well. So you can view that information here too. And then the SSIDs that you have, which you can also fully customize or add or remove new SSIDs and then the log information. So back to the dashboard on the top part, you have configuration options as well, wherein you can conf configure your radio options. I think I didn't show you this on the cloud portal, but you can do that um, on both sides as well. And then you have your VLAN settings or switch settings, uh, access control. 
Uh, that means your VIP and block list. And then let me go to network general settings. So here you have your alert settings, your firmware grade options. So you can set that by schedule or you can trigger the upgrade to happen now. So you can also select from uh, the current stable firmware, the beta firmware, or the previous um, firmware in case you want to roll back. So here you can also set a schedule on when the firmware would be automatically upgraded on the system. So right now it's set to Sunday to between 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. where nobody's utilizing it. Uh, by the way, the way a firmware upgrade works is if you have, let's say, a new device that you're adding on the system, immediately it will trigger an upgrade as well once you add it on the network. So this is to ensure that the device is upgraded and it, it works with the latest functions that we have on the cloud. <clears throat> so you can set a separate uh, schedule for the switches as well. So here I've set the switch to upgrade at a later time. So, because they are the APs that I have are plugged on the same switch. So, I want the APs to be upgraded first, followed by the switch. So, if you want the firmware information, you can see when the firmware was released as well. And then the other general settings that you have. By the way, the captive portal can be, can be configured here as well through the app. This is the block random connections, and then you have your advanced settings too. So captive portal can be configured here. The splash page can be configured here as well. And then if you want to add a new device, it's as easy as uh, click on this plus button and then click on register device. So from here, it's going to uh, open up the camera so that you can uh, scan the QR code on the unit. So the QR code is found on the sticker on the unit. So again, there are two ways to register the device. Uh, one is through scanning the QR code. Second is by keying in that uh, serial number on the unit. So almost all the features that we have on the cloud is available here on the cloud to go app. Um, similarly to uh, the port settings as well, you can configure here from the cloud app as well. But if you find features that are available on the cloud that are not on the app yet, uh, essentially we will port that over in the coming upgrades on the cloud app. So we are continuously, continuously upgrading the app as well. So once we have a new feature implemented on uh, the portal, it's going to be available on the cloud app maybe a few days later. Okay, so uh, any other questions, guys? Sorry, I think we went a bit over time. <laughs> I just got a message from Nancy. Okay, I think all the questions on chat have been addressed by Nancy and Matthew. Thank you for uh, helping to answer. Uh, Nancy, anything else that you want to add for today? She might be gone. Uh, I'll, I'll say from the <laughs> GoWatch point of view, uh, thanks everyone for thank attending you, today. So <laughs> hopefully, you, hopefully you learned something um, about the Ingenious platform and obviously, as you can see, it's quite full featured. And um, there's, there's quite a lot of stuff that you can do on there. So uh, if you need any other questions answered, don't hesitate to reach out to us here at Go Wireless. Um, Liam and myself are looking after the Ingenious brand here at Go Wireless. So if you have any questions, you can always email them to either Simon at GoWiFi.co.nz or Liam at GoWiFi.co.nz. And we'll be happy to help out. I think Nancy's having trouble with her microphone or something. Oh, He's sorry, talking. guys. Oh, uh, I was <laughs> on the phone. Thank you, guys. Uh, we'll keep in touch. We'll send the videos to Simon and uh, we'll update you on any new uh, cloud launches in the future. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Thank Simon. You Thank you, Simon. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. Have a good day.